Good morning everyone. In today's video, we will see what is a taxonomic hierarchy. It is also known as hierarchy system of classification or taxonomic rank. So this is the taxonomic rank. Before moving on to the taxonomic rank, we will see what is a taxonomy. Taxonomy is a word that is derived from two Greek words, taxes and nomos. Taxes means arrangement, nomos means method. So taxonomy is a branch of biology. So it is evident that Taxonomy is the method of arranging living organisms. So we are classifying living organisms. When I say living organisms, it includes plants, animals and microorganisms. So we are not just classifying organisms. We are identifying living organisms, naming it, describing its characteristic features and then we are classifying organisms. So we are classifying the organism based on two things. One is the similarities and dissimilarities between living organisms. If two or more organisms have similar characteristics, they are grouped under one category. If the organisms have different uh, characteristics, they are uh, separated from each other and they are put in different groups. Okay, And uh, the father of taxonomy is Sir Carl Linnaeus. And... Um, one important point in taxonomy is that we are not just classifying living organisms, we are also classifying the extinct organisms. We can find information about all the animals that, that are extinct at present. Extinct organisms means these are organisms that are not alive at present but they lived in the earth, they lived on the earth few years back okay so this is about the taxonomic ranks taxonomic ranks are nothing but so based on the similarities and dissimilarities of the organisms we are grouping we are categorizing living organisms into different groups so these groups and subgroups in which we categorize the organisms right these groups are called taxonomic ranks so domain is the highest taxonomic rank so all the living organisms on the earth is broadly classified into three domains archaea, bacteria and eukarya. So this domain can be further classified uh, you know if you take one domain if you take eukarya again that eukarya can be divided into many kingdoms. So this kingdom is more specific comparing a domain and this kingdom can again be subdivided into phylum. Phylum can again be categorized or subgrouped into classes and again classes can be divided into orders. Orders can again be categorized into family. Family can again be divided into genus and genus includes more than, um, more than one group of organisms. So again this genus will be categorized into species. Species is a more specific uh, species includes a more specific uh, group of organisms. So these organisms that are placed inside a particular species have the capacity to reproduce within themselves. And uh, previously pre species was considered as the lowest taxonomic rank but nowadays we have subspecies. This subspecies includes the organisms that are separated from each other due to geographical location. Imagine if species include, uh, one example for the species could be Canis lupus which includes all domestic dogs. Then this subspecies under the Canis lupus will include the dogs that are geographically separated from each other. I'll, I'll show you an example for this taxonomic rank so that we can understand more about this rank in detail. So these are the 8 taxonomic ranks, domain is the highest taxonomic rank, kingdom is the second highest taxonomic rank followed by phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. So species is not the lowest taxonomic rank, we also have one more category called subspecies which comes under this species category. And moving on to domain first, all the living organisms can be broadly classified into three domains, archaea, bacteria and eukarya. This eukarya domain includes all the living organisms that has uh, nucleus and cell organelles inside their cell. So these are eukaryotic organisms. So this eukaryotic organism are, are not similar to each other. They are different from each other. 
again it has to be divided into kingdoms so the kingdom animalia includes only animals so in kingdom animalia we are excluding plants fungi algae protozoans and we are concentrating only on animals in the kingdom animalia so all the animals are not similar so they are different from each other and that's why we are categorizing this kingdom animalia into phylums one such phylum is phylum chordata so this phylum chordata includes the animal that have backbone so here in phylum chordata we we are excluding the animals which do not have backbone we are concentrating only on the animals that have backbone in the phylum chordata and this phylum chordata you know all the animals that comes under this phylum chordata are not similar they are different from each other again we are categorizing this phylum chordata into small groups called class so this class mammalia includes all the animals that have backbone and that have the capacity to produce milk using mammary gland so this milk is used to feed their young ones so the class mammalia includes the animals that have backbone and mammary gland and uh, this uh, this class mammalia includes the animals that are that have some similarities and dissimilarities between them so again they need to be classified further into order so one order that comes under the class mammalia is carnivora so this order carnivora includes all the animals that have backbone and that have mammary gland but they feed only on the flesh of other animals this order carnivora includes the animals that uh, that are different from each other so again they must be categorized into groups called families so one such family under the order carnivora is canidae so this canidae family includes all the dog and dog like animals and this family is nothing but a combination of similar genus one such genus under the family canidae is genus canis so this genus canis includes all the dogs wolves and jackals so this genus includes more than one category of animals like dogs wolves and jackals again it is it is of different types of animals so again this genus must be categorized into species so the species canis lupus here lupus is the species name so we are not supposed to write the species name alone always we need to write the species name next to the genus name and for that purpose here i have written canis lupus but canis is the genus name lupus is the species name so this canis lupus includes only the domestic dog so here we are not including wild dog wolf or jackals we are concentrating only on the domestic dog so this species category includes the animals that have the capacity to you know reproduce among themselves so only the domestic dog can reproduce among themselves a domestic dog cannot reproduce or have a relationship with wolves okay and um, this species can again be categorized into subspecies a subspecies includes um, the category of the domestic dog that are different from each other based on the geographical location so here domain is a very broad classification it is a very general classification and this species is a very specific classification it includes the organism that has the ability to reproduce among themselves so domain is a broad category which is very general and species are very specific when we move across this taxonomic rank the specificity increases okay and uh, these terms you know these terms that represents the domain kingdom phylum class order family genus species and subspecies are called taxon so eukarya is a taxon animalia is again a taxon so the word or term that are used to describe the taxonomic rank are called taxon